Hi everyone, it's Fjordström. As a follow-up to a similar video I made last year where I compared Word to Pages and Google Docs, I'm back with another very detailed comparison between the latest versions of Keynote, PowerPoint on iPad and PowerPoint Online. This video will consist of seven parts, slide formatting, slide objects, animations and transitions, themes and master slide editing, presentation options, sharing and exporting and collaboration, and unique features. Before we continue, please comment below which app or service you use the most right now, and consider hitting the like button after watching as it helps the algorithm. Let's first start with slide formatting where we'll compare these aspects. When it comes to text formatting, of course the basics are there. Bold, italics, underlined, strike through, text color and word art styles in PowerPoint. In Keynote you can also highlight words. Keynote has additional options, capitalization, text outline, and you can even choose an image or gradient as a text color. I noticed that in PowerPoint Online, you can also choose a highlight color and change capitalization. Presentations don't really need that many paragraph options, but you do of course have bullets, numberings, and indentations in both apps. They also have horizontal and vertical alignment options, as well as columns. In Keynote, you can also set the exact line and paragraph spacing, and even the margin within a text box. PowerPoint Online also has text indentation and paragraph spacing. Now, what about paragraph styles? Well, it's good to know that only Keynote supports the use, modification, and creation of paragraph styles. When it comes to background formatting, Keynote allows you to choose between a color, gradient, or image. You can even add a color effect to that image to make your text stand out more. The PowerPoint app only allows you to choose a color. On the other hand, PowerPoint does give you cool design ideas when inserting an image. If you want to set an image as a background in PowerPoint, you will need to use PowerPoint Online. A clear layout in a presentation is very important. The easiest way to do this is just to choose between the preset layouts. The PowerPoint app and PowerPoint Online give you 9 options, and Keynote gives you 15 options. Some people like putting a footer at the bottom of each slide. In Keynote it seems to be just limited to slide numbers, but you can add anything by editing the master slide, which I'll come back to a bit later. You can't add a footer in the PowerPoint app, but it is possible in the online version. Next, we'll talk about all the kinds of objects you can insert in a presentation. Of course, all apps support text boxes, photos, and tables. In PowerPoint Online, you can also insert online pictures, which are powered by Bing. Customizing them is quite elaborate on PowerPoint and Keynote, offering styles, shadow, and reflection. Inserting a video from your iPad is only possible in the PowerPoint app and Keynote. Keynote also has repeat and play across slides settings. Inserting a web video, let's say from YouTube, seems to be only possible in the Keynote app and PowerPoint Online. Also inserting an audio file is possible in PowerPoint and Keynote. In the PowerPoint app, you can only select something from your music library. Online, you can choose a file, but it doesn't allow me to select audio files. In Keynote, you can drag and drop files or choose a soundtrack from your music library. I just need to add that choosing from my music library doesn't seem to work in either apps, but that might just be a bug. Still, it's good to know that you will probably be only allowed to insert non-DRM protected files for copyright reasons. Shapes like arrows, for example, are useful too, and both apps contain many different kinds of shapes to support your presentation. Both PowerPoint and Keynote offer ways to also add shadow to those shapes. Keynote takes it a step further and also adds reflection and opacity settings. Opacity is also possible in the online version of PowerPoint. PowerPoint has an icons feature which is cool. Keynote included icons already in their shapes gallery. The PowerPoint app, PowerPoint Online, and Keynote have drawing options. They make it easy to either actually draw something or use it for annotation, 
even while presenting. The difference here is that only the PowerPoint app will allow you to keep your annotations if you added them while presenting, which is very useful. Inserting a chart or even an interactive chart natively into a presentation is only possible in Keynote. PowerPoint Online doesn't support charts either, but you do have SmartArt for other purposes. Alright, next up are animations and transitions. Obviously, both PowerPoint and Keynote support animations. They include entrance, emphasis, and exit animations. Some animations in PowerPoint are also customizable. However, there's no way of rearranging the order of animations in the PowerPoint app, but it is possible online. Keynote again does it all. You can even change the timing and the duration. And by the way, animated charts are really cool in Keynote. If you used Keynote on Mac before, then you probably already know that Keynote has some very cool visual effects if you need them. Also, transitions are available in PowerPoint and Keynote. Transitions are customizable in both apps, while Keynote allows you to set the duration of your transitions. This is also possible in PowerPoint Online. Next up is a short but important category, themes and master slides. When creating a presentation, you can choose between 25 themes in the PowerPoint app and 45 themes in Keynote. You do have access to premium templates on PowerPoint Online if you're subscribed to Microsoft 365. Only in the Keynote app, you can also edit the master slides, so you can eventually save your presentation as a new theme, add it to the templates, and even send it to someone. Next are the options during a presentation. Both the PowerPoint app and Keynote have a presenter view where you can read your notes and see the next slides. You can also annotate or use a pointer during your presentation, but as I already mentioned before, only in PowerPoint you can keep those annotations after your presentation. Both apps also feature a rehearse mode. What this does is show your presentation in presenter view and show a timer to time yourself. Now, PowerPoint does have a new feature, which is very cool, and that is a coach that will tell you how you're doing. To control your slides, you can just use your keyboard or swipe left or swipe right. A very specific thing that I'd like to add here is that if you go back one step in Keynote, an entire paragraph will start over. Whereas in PowerPoint, you really just go back one step, which I personally prefer. If you want to make a presentation that automatically plays in a loop, you currently only have that option in Keynote. Now let's have a look at sharing, exporting and collaborating. When saving a presentation, the PowerPoint app will always suggest OneDrive first, but you can also save to SharePoint or to your iPad or another location via the Files app. PowerPoint Online only saves to OneDrive. Keynote will automatically place your new presentation in iCloud Drive, but you can change this in your settings. You can even choose to save it automatically to OneDrive if you want. To change location, just tap the title and move it to wherever you want. While PowerPoint Online doesn't export to PDF, the PowerPoint app does support it, automatically placing one slide per page. In Keynote, you can also customize the layout and more even. Besides PDFs, you can even export your presentation as a movie, animated GIF or GIF, separate images, a theme, or even a PowerPoint. You can also just share your presentation straight from PowerPoint and Keynote. To start collaborating, you will need to upload your PowerPoint presentation to OneDrive and enter the email address and message of your friend or colleague. You can also just copy the link and send it in a different way. You can also set a password and even an expiration date, which is a unique feature. In Keynote, it's very similar. You just move your Keynote to iCloud Drive and hit Share. Here you'll have to choose an app in which you want to send it from. You can also just choose to copy a link and set a password. Of course, each app has its own pros and cons. What adds to the pros are their unique features. The PowerPoint app has the add-ins, design ideas, and rehearsal with coach. PowerPoint Online also has Immersive Reader. This is Immersive Reader. And Accessibility Check. 
It should also have subtitles, but that feature doesn't seem to work on iPad yet. The Keynote app also allows you to use another iPhone or iPad as a remote control, create a presentation loop, manage paragraph styles, export your presentation as a movie, and create templates. Keynote Live is also a unique feature, but nowadays people just share their screen to do online presentations. So, what do you prefer? Did Keynote surprise you, maybe? Or did PowerPoint convince you? Of course, much will depend on how you're using presentations. If you work in a very Office 365 focused working environment, then you'll probably stick to PowerPoint and PowerPoint Online. But if you create presentations for yourself mainly, or work in an Apple environment, then maybe Keynote might be worth trying, if you haven't yet. Thank you very much for watching, and see you in the next video.